Hello everybody, my name is Lori Anderson, contributor for FreedomOutpost.com, as well as host for Resurrect the Republic RTR Truth Media on RBN Network. I wanted to discuss something with you today. Much of mainstream media has not reported on this within the United States of America. And usually when they don't report on something, they are being told not to report on it. How many of you are aware that uh, Vladimir Putin, his top driver, has been killed? So what I'm going to do is I am going to share with you the information and you can decide for yourself whether this was actually an accident or if this in turn was an assassination to send a message to Vladimir Putin. As reported in the DailyMail.com, quote, conspiracy theorists claim car crash that killed Vladimir Putin's chauffeur was an assassination attempt on the Russian president's life, warning that there is distressing content. I will leave links in the description box below for you to be able to access all articles that I am speaking about right now. Conspiracy theorists have claimed that a car crash that killed Vladimir Putin's chauffeur was part of an assassination plot that has been reported. CCTV footage taken on Kovalsky Avenue in the Russian capital, Moscow, show how another vehicle collided head-on with the presidential BMW. However, the Russian president was not in the car at the time when it was struck head-on by the Mercedes, which crossed over from the opposite side of the road. Russian media said that the car was being driven by Putin's favorite official driver, and now there has been unsubstantiated claims that the incident was part of an alleged assassination plot carried out by foreign secret agents. Conspiracy theorists have claimed that the car crash was kill that killed Vladimir Putin's chauffeur was an assassination plot. It had been reported. Right here is one of the pictures of this. I want you to notice something. This is a these are, of course, you have two one-ways. Um, this is a huge, huge roadway. So you have six lanes, and then you will have a bus lane, which is the seventh, both on, on both sides. One was going in one direction, and one was going in the other direction. And this right here, um, the head-on crash that killed President Putin's favorite official driver. The pro-Putin website Millennium Report said spooks operating in the city may have been trying to send a message to the president. Speculation over the crash has been ramped up further after police launched an investigation without expanding on details. The website, which describes itself as an alternative news platform, says there is a plot by a AAA cabal to take control of natural resources in Russia, including gold, oil, and gas. An article posted after the crash said that it was not very often that head of state of a superpower nation has sent such a dramatic and violent message that appears to have just happened with the killing of Russian President Vladimir Putin's favorite chauffeur while he was driving the president's official automobile, the article says, Putin's official car involved in the horror crash, killing the leader's favorite driver. And as you can see, the car was extremely messed up. Such an audacious threat to the life of the President Putin can only be coordinated by an inside group of foreign secret service agents who have proxies operating within Moscow. Moscow is so large that the agents themselves may have planned and carried out the attack from right inside of the city. The unsubstantiated claims made on the website appear to be politically motivated, according to the Daily Star. Russian media said the star was being driven by Putin's favorite official driver and that he was killed instantly, but the president was not in the vehicle at the time. The car is officially registered as belonging to the Federation Council, also known as the Russian Senate or Upper Chamber of Parliament. Medics arrived at the scene and said that the presidential driver had been killed on the spot. 
while the Mercedes driver, who was traveling alone, has been taken to the hospital in critical condition. And as of before I go any further, as I was showing you, and I, I spoke to you earlier, you can see this is how many lanes of uh, traffic that there is. It's, this is huge, huge, huge. And when you see the footage, you can clearly see other things uh, as far as looking like it is an intentional act. Now, does that mean it was? No, it does not mean it was. Um, however, we do want to report and you can decide for yourself. So this this vehicle literally uh, came over here and crossed over to hit um, Vladimir Putin's chauffeur's vehicle. The driver who was killed was not named, although it was reported that he had notched up more than 40 years of driving experience as an official driver. Police have only confirmed that they are investigating without giving any further details. The cleanup operation took several hours and a huge traffic jam formed when Kowalski Avenue was closed after the crash. So that is one of the reports. As you can see, that is a absolutely huge, um, huge roadway. And the more you look at it, you, you look at a lot of different aspects of things to see. Does it appear to be nefarious or is it just a car accident? Well, obviously they're investigating, but we don't um, assume any coincidences when it comes to the situation with, we've been reporting on how the globalists are panicking, how they are falling apart. They're losing their power structure. They're, they're losing their almighty um, stance globally and uh, Putin is one of the ones who stands against supporting terrorists and he stands against the invasion of sovereign nations and and he has been very not only outspoken but he has been um, strategic in helping to annihilate or at least try to annihilate ISIS um, the terrorists that the US government openly funds arms trains and um, supports because they think that they have a right to try to overthrow a president of a different country. So this is what I wanted to bring to your attention because this was reported on September the 8th. This is under car scoops. Now that other report was September the 7th. Amazingly, um, in this report, it's saying that there are new video details that the crash that killed Vladimir Putin's chauffeur. And in these details, it says, a shocking new video has emerged showing that the moment Vladimir Putin's presidential chauffeur was killed in a crash in Moscow, captured by a CCTV camera on Kavosky Avenue, the clip shows the moment the Mercedes-Benz CLS driver loses control of the car and smashes head on into the BMW 7 Series being driven by Putin's favorite driver. Interestingly, the video reveals that the CLS driver was not only speeding moments before the crash, but was also traveling in the off-limits middle lane of the busy road. When cresting the small left bend in the road, the rear end of the CLS begins to step out with a puff of smoke from the rear tires or brakes, then continues to drift sideways until it collided directly with the 7 Series, killing its driver immediately. In the preceding seconds, dozens of drivers can be seen stopping and rushing to the aid of the drivers. So, what's important to note on this is, is you put different little teeny tiny facts together that come up to create a larger picture. So with this interesting part of the video, it was showing that he was not only speeding uh, before the crash, but he was also traveling in an off-limits middle lane. Now, uh, that still does not mean that it was definitely an assassination attempt or that it was definitely uh, maybe even not an assassination attempt but maybe to send a direct message to President Putin 
trying to get him to stop with what he is doing because the United States of America politicians and bankers that are all involved in this cabal as well as individuals all over uh, within the United Nations and Saudi Arabia and everybody who is supporting these terrorists they do not like what Putin is doing he has been exposing the new international order or the new world order in old terms um, and has been refusing to go along with that so it could have been to send a message to Putin back off <clears throat> the reason that this is a good probability I'll show you in a moment I'm gonna play this video right here so that you can actually see now the crash is going to be over in here okay right over in here so keep your eye over in this area right here okay did you see that let's back that up again we're gonna back it up watch as it seems almost intentional you see this is a lane that no one is supposed to be traveling in right here you see this vehicle right here right over in here okay so let's take a closer look right there and then goes right directly almost as if a possibility that it was one of those messages being sent to President Putin I have the hope that <clears throat> the CIA or the FBI is not that stupid but you know <laughs> uh, we know that they are they've done it before they think they can get by with everything but at this point we honestly do not know I do know however that lamestream media I have not heard anything if they have reported on it uh, I apologize but I'm going to tell you that I have not seen anything from any of the talking heads out of NBC CBS ABC I don't even think Fox News has covered this so I want to thank the other individuals who on the internet who have covered this but then uh, and I'm not a uh, for or against Alex Jones he puts out quite a lot of good information and there's some things that he doesn't put out that he should put out that's just my personal opinion however he did come out with another article and this was on September the 9th one day after the article that I just showed you now the update on Putin's favorite chauffeur killed in the accident exactly as a former CIA director described on TV now this former CIA director had described it on TV one month or approximately a month before Vladimir Putin's chauffeur was killed in such a manner and I also want to say let's please not forget us Christians let's let's pray please for the the family members of the chauffeur um, let's pray also for those in Russia who had any ties to the chauffeur they've lost somebody that they loved and they care about whether it was or was not an assassination attempt whether it was or was not an attempt to send a message or whether it was just an accident there are still loved ones out there that are hurting right now so only a month ago Morrill stunningly stated openly on television that he wanted to target the leadership of Russia Iran and Assad in Syria yes one of these corrupt little squirmy scum um, 
Curtis in the comments below pointed to the stunning admission by Mike Morrell, former acting director of the CIA and longtime deputy director at CIA. He is extremely close to Hillary via their mutual ties to Beacon Global Strategies LLC change firm. Morrell went to after leaving the CIA, which is engaged in antagonizing our enemies. Only a month ago, Morrell stunningly stated openly on television that he wanted to target the leadership of Russia, Iran, and Assad in Syria. Morrell explicitly advocated taking out guards, top staff, top generals, etc., etc. Of these leaders, not trying to assassinating the head of state, but destroying the trusted people around him, and the killing of Putin's favorite chauffeur appears to be exactly in the plan stated so carefully. This video is a must-see. These underhanded tactics are exactly what is going on and are likely to drag us into an all-out world war against these three nations and quite possibly China as well. So before I play that video for you and record, I want to say this. The illusion that Russia is our enemy is just that. It is an illusion. It is a fear tactic. They must always create a boogeyman. Just like they tried to create, Russia is the one who hacked Hillary's emails so they can try to get everybody panicked about Russia hacking emails instead of the content of the emails. Here's the thing, Mrs. Clinton. Had you had it secured in the first place, whoever hacked it would not have been able to hack it. And on top of that, had you not been writing things that were corrupt and that were going along with your Clinton Foundation, the RICO violations, and some people call it play to pay to play, but the reality is it's not pay to play, it's bribery. It's violations of RICO. Call it for what it is. You're a criminal, Mrs. Clinton, and your own emails exposed that and is exposing a lot of higher-ups in your leadership and in Congress and Ms. Pelosi and all of the other ones that don't quite want it known that they're part of the corruption. We've already known, so you're not really doing anything. Here is where the ex-CIA boss calls to kill Russians and Iranians in Syria. I'd give them the, the, thing, the, the, the things that they need to both go after the Assad government, but, but also to have the, have the Iranians and the Russians pay a little price, right? When we were in Iraq, the Iranians were giving weapons to the Shia militia who were killing American soldiers, right? right? They were making, the Iranians were making us pay a price. Okay. Before I play the rest of that, did you hear how he said that? When we were in Iraq, they were giving weapons to the Shia militias and they were killing Americans. They're making Americans pay for invading their country. Hello. We're, they weren't over here in the United States of America killing people. They were killing our military that was unlawfully there in Iraq in the first place, the invaders. I love our military. I do. But they're getting marching orders from UN and NATO, and they are following unlawful we orders. We need to make the, the Iranians pay a price in Syria. We need to make the Russians pay a price. The other okay, thing I we would need, do... We make them pay the price by killing, killing Russians? Yes. And, and Iranians. killing Iranians? Yes. Covertly. So the, you don't tell the world about it, right? You don't stand up at the Pentagon and say, we did this, right? But you make sure they know it in Moscow but, and Tehran. The people who Here's the other thing I want to do. Here's the other thing I want to do. I want to go after, I want to go after those things that Assad sees as his personal power base, right? I want to scare Assad. So I want to, I want to um, go after his presidential guard. I want to bomb his offices in the middle of the night. Well, that happened about two years ago. As you remember when his brother-in-law was 
I want to destroy his presidential aircraft on the ground. I want to destroy his presidential helicopters. Um, I want to make him think we're coming after him, right? Um, I'm not advocating assassinating him. I'm not, I am not advocating that. I'm advocating going after the, what he thinks is his power base, right? And what he needs to survive. I want him to think about, um, this is not going to end well for me, right? Mm. Um, I want to, I want to put pressure on him. I want to put pressure on the Iranians. I want to put pressure on the Russians, um, to come to that diplomatic settlement. Okay. So... <clears throat> This little weasel of a man right here. As you can tell, this is a pencil pusher. This man will gladly send our special operations commander, CIA, or other individuals to do his little dirty work, his little pencil pusher deal. You can tell that this man by himself would be a scared um, individual. He, without bodyguards or without someone protecting him, he's all for sending everybody else in to do the dirty work. But I guarantee you, this little weasel-looking individual would have nothing to do with nothing. He has the illusion in his mind that he has power. Oh, this is what I would do. I would attack people in their own country unlawfully without the approval of Congress so that I can instill fear. That's scum that we're looking at right there. Scum. Because he not only admits that he wants to target these individual whether it be Russia or whether it be Assad's upper men, he and Iran's, he wants to scare them. Does he not understand, and he probably does, number one, everything he is talking about doing is illegal and unlawful. Period. No due process. Let's just murder people to send a message. Let's go invade into other people's countries that are sovereign and go murder their people because, you know, I just think I'm all something, all that, and a bag of chips, and I think you must listen to me because I think I've, I, you know, I'm more important. You must bow to me. This is the type of individuals that are saturated within the United States Corporation. These individuals actually have convinced themselves that if other people don't agree with them and won't bow to their policies and won't step down from being president of a sovereign nation that the people elected them to be the leaders well you know I'm sorry I'm gonna stand for our people you can keep your opinion and these little rats like this feel like they have a right yet some of them even feel like they have a duty to invade other countries to arm train fund and support terrorists that mass murder not only military individuals of that sovereign nation but they behead 12 year old children they rape women they behead and kill and murder Christians and Muslims alike all because this little freaking piece of crud not just him, but individuals like him think that, oh, well, you know, <gasps> someone must listen to him. Who in the world do these individuals think that they are? They wake up 
the same way that we do. They put their pants on the same way that we do. We, the people of the United States of America, pay their darn paychecks, and they are assassinating and attempted assassinations and invading all other countries and murdering those people in our name. And they get paid to do it by we the people, and yet we still pay taxes. We still haven't arrested each and every one of these criminals. What is wrong with that? Have we become so corrupt within the United States of America that every one of these scum, and there is not more of them than there is of us. So explain to me why these scum who support the murder of humanity, whether it be here on our land within the Union or whether it be across the globe, why do we allow them to continue to sit in their seats? And I blame a lot of it on quote unquote constitutional law enforcement that are not doing their jobs and arresting them. When they openly admit to treason. They openly admit to arming, supporting, and training, and funding terrorists. That's treason against our union. What happened to the sergeant at arms that sits in the Congress? He even has the authority to arrest President Barack Obama. Have you seen him? He not only has the authority, he has the duty. Silence out of all of them. Silence. As these leeches on humanity suck the lifeblood out of the citizens and the people of the United States of America and around the globe. These leeches need to be indicted, tried, and convicted for their treason, their crimes against humanity, their war crimes, their invasions. The truth will come out. The truth will come out. And you know one thing I'm really thankful for? I'm really thankful that the Russian people, even President Putin, even President Assad, no. They've openly said they know it is not we the people that are doing this to their sovereign nations. They expose it's the corrupt global elite that's trying to seek international dominance over everybody's life, whether it be money or resources or just depopulating the earth. They're scum. You know, Bible says, be angry and sin not. We must have a righteous anger. And if you're not angry about this, God forbid. Thank you. God bless you. Watch your backs and check your facts. Semper Fidelis and good night.